Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Anabaptist Perspectives. I'm here with Patrick Matthews and Bill, what was the last Shiley. name? Shiley. Shiley. Okay, awesome. We're here in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. You guys have a ministry here that you call The Room. And let's just dialogue about this a little. Um, you, you were on one of our episodes last year mm-hmm. um, about your conversion story, how you came to know Jesus, and then you went and started this ministry. Um, just walk us through a little bit of that. What was that process? What do you guys do here? Okay, to start with how this uh, began, um, I took this room over, it was four different rooms, and it was decayed, rotted, and torn up, sort of like myself. And wow. as I went through each room and ripped out everything, I was ripping out the sin in my life, and I was rebuilding myself mm-hmm. as I did this room. And it's still not done, and if you look at it, it will never be done. There will always be <laughs> something slightly screwed because in my life, there's always something slightly screwed, and Christ is always compelling me to do something more. It was a practical way of me living out Christianity by mm-hmm. me doing what in this room I was also doing in myself. Yeah, so what types of ministry do you do here, and how long, how long have you been here? As well? We've been here about seven years, and it, we're a soup kitchen. That's what we started with. We mm-hmm. came to minister to the people in the street, and what we found is our participants mm-hmm. were getting a bit screwed because it wasn't working the way they want it. And what they realized is that the mission Mm -hmm. field really was in their heart. And they had to come in here each time with a positive Mm -hmm. smile and a willingness to teach God to these people, even though they weren't getting it. The intended Mm -hmm. persons were um, not not the mission field. I think it was us. So you have a number of different things going on here then. Yeah. We have a soup kitchen on Tuesdays and Fridays. And Mm -hmm. we have a Bible study that Bill Um, does every Saturday he leads that out and then we have a church service which Bill again is leading out on that Mm, wonderful wonderful and Bill how long have you been involved with this Uh, I've been pretty regularly involved since probably 2015 sometime 2015 yeah so it'll be about three three and a half years somewhere in there so, so can you all walk me through the core vision of this? I'm, I mean, it's Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. We're not in some big city. You know, this isn't New York or L.A. We're right here in, I don't know, kind of small town Chambersburg doing this. Walk me through that. Is, yeah, what, what's the vision? And also, how does this work with what Jesus taught us, you know, going to the least of these and, and all of that? Originally, I, I, I was in prison and Christ told me to come back to the town that I committed the crime and that if Mm. I didn't fix what was behind me, I couldn't go ahead. And that was both fiscally, spiritually, and relationships. So I came back here. I didn't Mm. want to do this. The cost. They always Mm -hmm. talk about count the cost before you build a building. Had I counted the cost before I changed my life, I might not have done it Mm. because it's cost me everything that I had prior to being a Christian to turn my life over to Christ. And this is completely... Mm-hmm. different than what I thought. Mm-hmm. Um, I had to... You know, I grew up on motorcycles. I don't ride a motorcycle. Mm-hmm. And that's just one of the plain things. I don't wear black boots anymore because I used to kick people in the head with black boots. Mm-hmm. I wear brown boots. Everything in my life had to turn around. And it, it turned with a, a twist of Christ. And had I counted the cost before I did this, I wouldn't have done it. So one day I was walking across the bridge and I said, that's it. I'm done. I'm not mm-hmm. doing this. I don't want this. It, it's too much. And every step that I took away from this room, because I was heading to rent this room, and I was on the bridge coming here and I turned around and I said, no, I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. And every step I took, I thought, you know where this is taking you. You know what this does. You know what the cost is. Mm -hmm. And about 12 steps out, I turned around and I said, okay, I'll do it. And I came here and I rented this room. And the first thing we did is we pulled all the the blinds off the windows. And the owner said, well, what if somebody breaks in? I said, well, God will provide. Mm -hmm. I had a simple childlike faith. And sometimes that childlike faith gets tainted by the words that are thrown around in the groups. So mm-hmm. my mm-hmm. intended goal on this place was to teach people childlike faith. 
Yeah, I'd, I'd say each of us is going to have our different perspective about it, but the goal here is to do something. I'm not sure that Jesus really targeted a demograph um, as much as he encountered people and he met needs and he did something about them. And um, for me personally, uh, that's a little bit the way I feel about the room here is Patrick had already started before I even moved up here five years ago through part of my personal journey with God and surrendering uh, the home life, the abuse that went on in my life. Part of, part of when I came to that point was beginning to look for God using those things in my life um, to bring good. And automatically part of that was reaching out to other people who had experienced some of those kind of things. And I fought it for a long time, but uh, that's why I'm here is because there was something, I, ne I needed to be doing something um, and to make a long story short, uh, with moving up here, I didn't have anything anymore in my life that I, I had had in Kentucky or even at Faith Mission. And um, this was an opening. It was available. I was asked to come in and help out with things. And so um, it's the door that God opened. And I, I don't have, you know, any alphabet soup behind my name. Um, it's not like we think we know how to do this and here we're going to show you, you know, a five-step process, but, sure. but simply learning to connect with people to, um, to show them God's love and to lead them towards, towards his healing in, in their lives. And that's, that's what we try to do here. And so are you targeting primarily homelessness or, or is it just anybody you see in Chambersburg that would be needy and need a place like this? We don't really have to advertise. Everybody in town huh. knows they wow. just show up. And hmm. I, for a long time, didn't know people's last names because when the police came, a lot of our, our, our uh, clients are, um, have dual lives. <laughs> one they show here and one they purvey in the street. And when the police would come and say, do you know Bill blah, blah, I would say, I know a lot of Bills, but I don't know that person. Well, they've gotten smart, and what they've done is come with a picture because they know that <laughs> wow. I know most of the people. But we don't ask people their names. It's mm -hmm. not important. It's not important how you got here. It's mm -hmm. important that you're here, and they feel safe enough to come in here. Um, so, well, I'm really curious then, like, how how has it been going with the church that you've started here? You know, you're leading out in that, and, and, and I'm guessing that's been going for several years. Like, do you see... You know, we all like to, oh, what's the numbers? What's the results? But honestly, like, is there a lot of interest in what you're doing here, um, especially the spiritual side? It's beginning to catch. It's like anything. Mm -hmm. um, in the beginning, you have to remind people, and in, if you get them to come enough times. It, uh, I've heard often that if you have a habit you want to break, for 30 days, if you do mm -hmm. something different, then it becomes your standard. Mm -hmm. Well. How do you quantify that in church? These are people that go to any church and they usually go with their hand out. And now they're coming here and they're being fed spiritual food, not physical mm -hmm. or not um, financial food, which is what a lot of people go for. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if I go around and, and prompt each person to come, sooner or later it may become a habit. I don't know. Yeah. Um, as yeah. I told you in the last interview, David Eby came to me 28 years before I turned my heart. I don't know. Wow. And I, I explained this the last time. The no-till method of witnessing the people is to go through, put the seeds, don't disrupt the soil. I think in this collaborative effort, <laughs> we're going 21 inches deep into the soil, turning it over, knowing that the rocks in the soil may upset our piece of equipment. It may even harm us. Mm -hmm. But we're willing to do that. And if we turn the soil up enough, then we can plant the good seed. Mm -hmm. And then... Like I said before, the demographics used to be the people that come in here. I think it's us, the volunteers that come in here, mm -hmm. that is the real uh, mission field. Because mm -hmm. we have a lot of plain people who theoretically want to do something and practically don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. Bill? I, th I think that's a good point. And I, I'll say that myself, that my interaction here has done more for me personally, challenged me personally, probably than anybody else, anybody else here. Um, this whole thing has kind of evolved, so we started out more or less having it open in the afternoons for people to, to be a safe place for people to come out of the cold and stuff. We began offering meals here, and so that was the main attraction. And then the Bible study, that Bible study actually was another lady, began a ladies' Bible study, and then guys started coming in, so I began to help out and eventually took it over. So it's kind of been a modular thing as we, as we felt needs. And then the Bible study, that's been going for 
uh, about two and a half years now. And what happens is, is we, we encounter people with the food. That's social time. It's where we make connections with people. And then people who are hungry for something more serious come in Saturday nights to Bible study. And then the Sunday afternoon meetings kind of grew out of the fact that Bible study is great to have discussion and questions, but I felt like we needed some time with them where someone could present in a, in a systematic, orderly train of thought teaching on, on a certain subject. So that's more or less what the Sunday afternoon is for. One of the reasons that people come in here is because it's a safe place and because trust is built. And that happens through a lot of um, social interaction. Um, the, the ability to influence a person is directly proportionate to the amount that they feel like we actually care about them as, as a person. Yeah. So then there's things like Christmas Day, Thanksgiving Day that we do things in here with them because a lot of them don't have family um, or it's not the kind of thing they want to be with. Um, yeah. And, this, and so, so what it sounded like this isn't, you didn't just show up and instantly have people's trust, oh, and, no. uh -huh. and, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing yeah. this is a man, like, yeah. and I think that's something that, that we really need to keep being reminded of. We start doing ministry, and we're like, oh, where's the fruit? Right. You know, we want yeah. to see results because mm -hmm. we're impatient, and, you know, this, this is things that can take many, many years. Like you were saying, those habits, those mindsets need to be changed. It's that continual planting of seed. We had a guy up the street, and we initially came in contact with him, because he overdosed twice from heroin. Wow. And I went out and walked up and put my arm on him. And I said, you know why we're here and we keep pestering you? We really care about you. And in a lucid period of time where he stopped using the heroin, he came in here and he was encouraged by that. Now, Satan always you know, shows you the other side. They show you the beer can, mm -hmm. but they don't show you the dumpster where mm -hmm. you throw it. And he right now, I think, is following the, the alternate path. Hmm. Um, talking about the church thing, my idea when we started this, I kept saying to Bill and different people, we need to start a church service. The inclination or the incline from street to Mennonite church is really steep. Mm -hmm. So if we can somehow bring it down, package it in a one hour increment and throw some sand for traction, maybe hmm. eventually we'll get some converts. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the, the thing about church here in town we have a service in here or a meeting Sunday afternoon, however you want to use correct terminology there. <laughs> but sure. um, at this point, there, there's Chambersburg Christian Fellowship meets in town here. But um, something that's becoming a growing conviction to me is that we, people are not going to take us seriously until we become one um, with them in circumstance. Um, and that's, that's my prayer is that a, a, a church, a group of people who are, are committed to following God as dear children live here in town. And I think that's when things are really going to be able to take off because a big piece that's missing right now is our ability to mentor people. Um, these people still have a, a social life they have to live and they have to go other places for it. And so at this point, as far as like having people who are part of indigenous people who are actually part of, of a, a church that's following Jesus here in town, um, or whatever you want to call it, conservative Anabaptist type church or something like that. We don't really have that yet. There are people who come regularly to Bible study, who come regular to the Sunday afternoon meetings. But I feel like we're not really able to offer church here yet because there's not people who actually live here um, and we don't have enough manpower yeah. here, so to speak, yet. So, and that's so that's a goal I'm, wor I, I would, I'm personally working towards is yeah. moving into town here. And like moving it up to the next level is you've built a lot of groundwork now let's, let's stabilize it, right. basically. Yeah, yeah. right. Hmm. I am a member of Chambersburg Christian Fellowship, and our, my church and the three sister churches from Shippensburg and St. Thomas are all involved in this, mm -hmm. but they don't know what to do with it sometimes. Um, yeah. And so we have, I'll say, the blessing from everybody to do this church. We have the nod and the wink, um, and it's working. Like, I'm encouraged by what I see because if we have somebody come in two or three times, that's the fruit that I'm looking for. Yeah. You know, it's because it's beginning something. It's starting to change that habit. We have a young lady up the street who is coming in, and she's trying to put a veiling on. I, I don't know if she knows what she's doing <laughs> completely, yeah. but she's feeling convicted, and I think that's what this room's about, conviction. Yeah, the... the uh the demographic we're working with here is definitely a, a difficult one. Um, I'd say 
probably 60% at least actually have a place to live. Mm -hmm. Maybe more than that. Maybe it's more closer to 80%. Don't know. Um, but it's, it's, low, <laughs> it's low income people, people mm -hmm. who have a job but aren't making a lot, things mm -hmm. like that. And the poor, in, the poor in today's society is different by and large than the poor in Jesus' society. Yep. Because most of them are poor because of personal drama, uh, things that have happened in their lives, scarring that's happened, the way they've responded to it, and that keeps them from having a job. Um, either because of their their uh, lack of interpersonal skills or because of crime, um, they can't get a job, and and that kind of stuff goes on. And those things, there's deep roots to that stuff. And yeah. that's where you're not just going to come in and preach a message and have somebody jump up and start looking like a good Mennonite and come into church, um, so to speak. And I'm not sure that's really what Jesus wants, but I don't, it takes I a don't lot of work. Either. It takes a lot, yeah. of, a lot of work, a lot of building trust, like you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. and walking with them. Um, through those those little steps. Well, but we would, what you're describing right there is discipleship. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and Jesus said, you know, go into all the world and make disciples. disciples. Right. You know, exactly. I mean, obviously, get, get you know, converts is a natural part of that, but disciples is the actual goal. That's, so it's, I, I like that, that you're focusing on that. It's, it's, it's your long-term work. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. When I originally started this, I could only take it so far. I'm an advocate for somebody who's in the street. I always want to do for them. And I realized to get it to where it needed to be, I needed to pass the torch on to the young people. And they took the name, the Queen Street Mission, and turned it into the room, which was the original name at first. <laughs> but it didn't have the spiritual connotation, so they avoided it. But the young people have taken this, and they've made it their own. Like mm -hmm. I said to you before we started this, if the vision is here and the visionary goes out of the picture, what happens is the vision dies with it. Yeah. But if you pass the torch, here's the torch, Bill. If he takes it and mm -hmm. he runs with it, now he's living it and the vision goes on. Mm -hmm. I think about the guy besides the pool in Bethesda. Mm -hmm. You know, he knew he was crippled, but he did the same thing over and over, expecting different results until Christ came in there. He didn't realize mm -hmm. there was an offer. And I think that's what we do. We walk around and look for those people who are mm -hmm. crippled, maimed, sitting by the pool. Mm -hmm. And we invite them in here. Um, yeah. And I'm not saying this is the only way, but this is the way that we found right now. We would like other people to come from outside the community, like Tidings of Peace has volunteer people. We would yeah. love to see them come here and help us and explore this idea and see if we can build the community in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. And why Chambersburg? Why not? <laughs> you know, like, well, uh, yeah, I wanted to hear you speak into that, though, because it, I mean, Chambersburg, okay, I mean, you know, it's not, it doesn't sound dramatic, like New York City, or, you know, whatever, but, but yeah, just walk me through that one. Okay, Chambersburg was, like I said, I came out of prison, and I went back to the place that I committed crimes. I felt mm -hmm. that if I could change my life here, that anybody could change their life wherever they're at, so yeah. I came into Chambersburg, mm -hmm. and Somehow, I kept selling it to the local churches, and they got on to the idea. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I don't feel mm -hmm. like I, it's, I, I go to Chambersburg Christian Fellowship, and people say, well, you know, go over here, go over there. And I said, but I'm led here. I feel the Holy Spirit wants me in Chambersburg yeah. Christian Fellowship. And when they accepted me in, they, <laughs> I looked at it, Clyde Lehman, and I said, Thankfully, you lowered your standards and let me in, but now that you lowered your standards and let me in, I'm here. What are you going to mm. do with me? So, in a way, I'm sure. challenging them to chip away at their thought process of people and, and possible converts. And mm -hmm. I don't know. I just feel led to this place. I don't know why God wants Chambersburg, but I feel He wants us mm -hmm. here. And I, I think other people are starting to get that same feeling. But you have to yeah. be here to have it happen. You know, there are so many. We can be overwhelmed with people in New York mm -hmm. because the services are so many. But right here, this is a manageable thing. Mm -hmm. And the entrance into what's called the movement of the broom, mm -hmm. which is starting to grow in Hagerstown and possibly will go to Harrisburg at some point, has mm -hmm. to start where it's manageable. Mm -hmm. And then once it's obtained here to a margin, then you can go somewhere else. Yeah. And you have to pass the torch on to the people as we go through. If we don't achieve that, then all we have is action with no real motive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When it's, it's almost like, okay, so you're choosing, a, a, I mean, definitely a smaller town 
than a lot of places you could have went. Is, is part of the idea you could inspire Anabaptist churches all over the place to say, look, your local town's right there. Go, go, go do something like this. There's needy people everywhere, you know. I, I was talking to a very conservative Mennonite church in a, down that way, I'm not going to say. But mm -hmm. um, they told me about their mission in Haiti. They told me about their mission in um, Africa. And I said, well, that's really cool. Chambersburg's eight miles up the street. <gasps> and they didn't want to deal with that. Mm -hmm. It's easy to go into a country and show up and people go, ah. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to come to spiritually stuck people repeatedly mm. and trying to get them to pry themselves out of their behaviors. Yeah. And, you know, this is not an easy win. But Christ went to the people who were unwell and tried to mentor to them, people that were sick. He didn't come for the, the people that are well. And I guess in mm -hmm. some ways, what I'm proposing here is I came to my church because people felt they were well. And I'm pointing out that we're all sick and we all need help. Mm -hmm. Anyway, to get in touch with me, www.harken, H-E-A-R-K-E-N, house.org. Email me at patrick at harkenhouse.org. Bill is billtoteach at gmail.com.